We are going to be doing two sessions. This is the first one uh, about how we can use our native languages, whether that is Gaelic or Scots or Scots dialect, um, such as Doric or Shetland. So why do you sort of see uh, now uh, Gaelic as being an asset that you could really use for your business? I just think um, it brings something different to the culture of your business um, for the staff as well as also the experience that the customers will appreciate. Um, and I think, you know, based on my own experiences of going abroad, I think you, um, they, they play a lot on what is kind of natural within their kind of culture and, and what they're enthused about. And I think it's really important just to kind of um, to drive that, you know, through tourism and, and also through, <coughs> um, you know, the, the, the people who live here. Really. Yeah. It's all about stories, really. And, and I, have a, I have a story that goes along with the sector that I'm in. So I'm a crofter, uh, born and raised. The family uh, have been on, on the croft for generations um, and, and Gaelic is part of that as well you know Gaelic and crofting go hand in hand wh where I am and uh, it's a you know it's a big part of what ties the community together you know everybody speaks Gaelic when we're working together in the Fank communally and things like that so Gaelic is, is, a, is a big part of of my community and of my day-to-day -day life people are interested in in, in these sectors I think they, they have a perhaps a romantic notion of what, what things are like, or maybe they're just interested from a practical sense in, in terms of crofting or, or, or the language. So there, there are different, uh, different reasons, I think, why people show an interest, but there are, uh, and the, the, that interest will be at different levels as well. But they will come and, um, and, and ask, and, and sometimes they don't even know that they've got an interest until they, until they hear a little bit, or they see you know, the business name is in Gaelic, or uh, I, I usually start by saying a little something to them in Gaelic and then they realise, oh, this, this isn't maybe exactly what I expected, maybe it's a little bit different and they're interested in something they didn't even realise they were interested in. It needs to be subtle, it mm -hmm. needs to be quite sympathetically done um, so that there is kind of a careful balance that people don't feel that it's being rammed down their throat. Yeah. But the way that I would like to probably um, take this on is very similar to how we did our eco-conscious uh, kind of outlook where it's actually just kind of embedded within mm. the business and it's something that we just do naturally. Mm -hmm. I really liked what you were saying about having a story and kind of connecting with people and normalising it and I think that's really really important because often you kind of like scream and shout this is what we're doing as if you have to do it because mm -hmm. this is what somebody says or it has to be part of tourism. But I actually like the fact of maybe just filtering it in just quite mm -hmm. kind of gently mm -hmm. and then seeing what kind of reaction you get. But I think it's going to be really important to signpost to people mm -hmm. like yourselves um, because I can't do everything, you know, yeah. and it's not kind of our day to day. No, but I think, I think kind of that's, that's a, really, um, a really good point there. It's, it's not about doing it as like, oh, here's another thing we have to do. Yeah. We have to be eco-friendly. Now we have to do this and we have, to, we have to do it. It's actually something that can be really interesting and give you a renewed passion mm -hmm. really for your business yeah. and bring to life some stories that you maybe didn't even know existed that surround your business. You're highlighting the differences. That's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. People aren't coming here <laughs> to see what's the same as where they are in America or no. Japan. Or, Starbucks and McDonald's. Yeah, exactly. That's not what they want. They want, yeah. they want the authentic uh, taste of what it's like to live in these places. And, um, you know, we're, we're talking about Vikings in Shetland. We have the Vikings too mm -hmm. and lots of, the, lots of place names, mm -hmm. lots of the similar place names. So we've got, we've got a combination of Gaelic culture, Viking culture. Um, you know, I found a, a Viking comb on the croft. I found a, an Iron Age skull on the croft. So there's lots of different things that you can talk about. It's not just, like you're saying, ramming Gaelic down their, down their throats. It's part and partial of my life, of the life of many other people. Mm. They are. And the story of your business yeah. and, and the area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a dynamic industry where you've got different levels and there's different stories. And it's not necessarily uh, just this romantic image that, that everybody has. It's a, it's a living thing where there, there are lots of different levels and I think that's, that's the important thing. And if people want to hear the, the romantic side of things with Outlander and all that kind of stuff, then fine, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll, give, them, we'll give them what they want. <laughs> but I, I want it to be authentic. It's not just, you know, I'm not going to be standing there dressed in a Harris Tweed suit and not, not, I wear a hoodie and, and dungarees when I'm out <laughs> the croft. You know, that's, that's what that's what it's, you it's about. You have to be authentic. That's you have the to point, be authentic. You have to be it? yourself. Yeah. I think not not this right. not 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 this fake thing. Mm -hmm. But 
being a Viking is quite authentic to you, <laughs> isn't it, Davey? Or well, a yeah. wizard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, um, it depends on what audience you're going for. And it's very true that, that what people are looking for is the authentic experience. That they're, they're not... Uh, you're very wise when you say you don't want the random stuff in people's thoughts. You, you don't want to artificially create something that, that you're going to have to live up to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because that becomes increasingly more difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what you need to do is to give people the authentic experience. And in my experience, they're just as interested in modern Shetland um, as they might be in archaeological Shetland. Uh, some of the stories that you tell are, are old stories. The oldest I tell is probably a thousand years old, the actual story itself. Some of them are, you know, things that happened last year. I make the comparison quite often between um, being green you know, why are we being green? Well, we're being green to save the environment, okay? But then when you say to people, you're being green to save yourself money. Oh, okay. <laughs> now you're saying to people, you're, you're, you're going down the garlic route to save garlic? Okay, yeah. You're going down the garlic route to make yourself money? Yes. Okay, now you're talking. So that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's what it's about. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. who would have said that people were going to pay me money to come and muck out my hen house? <laughs> no, mm -hmm. Nobody, you know, but, they, but it, it does happen. You might start getting people to pay you to come and clean the rooms, you know. <laughs> you know, there might be, you know, but you've, you've got to be creative, you've got to think outside the box, and you've got to think of ways to, to make yourself money. <laughs>